In this video, I'll be talking about classification. So, what is classification? Classification is sorting of organisms into groups based on their common features. What are the characteristics of organisms? They are movement, respiration, sensitivity, growth, reproduction, excretion, and nutrition. Movement is a change of position. Respiration is the releasing of energy for metabolic reactions. Sensitivity is for detecting and responding to changes in the environment. Growth is the increase in size and number of cells. Reproduction is the making of new organisms of the same species. Excretion is the removal of waste products. And nutrition is taking in materials for development. So there are two ways in which organisms are classified. The first way is the similarity in the body structure. This includes the morphology, which is the overall shape of the body, and the anatomy, which is the detailed body structure. The second way is the similarity in DNA. Now there are seven classification systems. The first is the kingdom, second, phylum, third, class, fourth, order, fifth, family, sixth, genus, and seven, species. The way I memorize this is using a mnemonic, which is key ponds clean or frogs get sick. So there are five kingdoms. The first is animals, second is the plants, the third is fungi, the fourth is the protoctista, and fifth is the prokaryotes. Now let's talk about animals. Animals are multicellular, meaning they have a bunch of different cells in their body. They do not have a cell wall or a chloroplast. They feed on organic substances made by other living organisms. Moving on to plants, plants are also multicellular. Unlike animals, plants have cell walls that are made of cellulose and they feed by photosynthesis. Next we have fungi and fungi are also multicellular. They have cell walls made of chitin However, they do not have chloroplasts, but they have saprophytic nutrition, meaning they feed on decayed matter. And here's an example of a fungi. Now, what about protoctista? Well, most of them are unicellular. They have cell walls and chloroplasts, and some of them feed by photosynthesis, such as algae. Lastly, we have prokaryotes. So prokaryotes do not have a nucleus or a mitochondria. They have cell walls made of murine. Some of them can cause diseases such as tuberculosis, while others are useful, such as making insulin. Here's an example of a label diagram of a prokaryote. Moving on to the next classification system, which is the phylum. It is divided into vertebrates and arthropods or invertebrates. So there are five types of vertebrates and they are fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. Here are some examples of vertebrates. Now there are four types of arthropods and these are insects, arachnids, crustaceans, and myropods. Here are some examples. Now we can move on to classification of plants. We have monocot plants and these plants have one cotyledon. Their petals are usually in multiples of three. Their leaves are narrow and they have parallel veins. And they have fibrous root systems. Examples of monocot plants are orchids, wheat, rice and bananas. Moving on to dicot plants, they have two cotyledons and their petals are usually in multiples of four or five. They have broad leaves with branching veins, and they have a tap root system. So examples of dicot plants are oak and maple trees, cacti, and sunflowers. Now let's talk about the dichotomous key. So what is it used for? Well, it's used for identifying plants and animal species based on their characteristics. Here's an example of what a dichotomous key would look like. 